Thanks for coming out today. This is a day that we honor veterans. This is a day when we say, honor the dead, but fight like hell for the living. Current situation in the country today with the war in Iraq dictates that lots of our young people who've been caught up in an economic draft, and if you look at who's fighting this war, the social strata that they represent, you will see clearly that this is a rich man's war and a poor man's fight. A lot of those young people are returning today. The treatment that they're receiving, being held in isolation, and the treatment they're receiving by the military is shameful. Uh, is this how we honor our veterans? We're meeting here today in a location that is approximately where the Vietnam Veterans Memorial used to be. I say approximately because during the reconstruction of Wacker Drive, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial was removed and it was never put back in place. In fact, it does not exist any longer. Uh, we've heard various things from the Daly administration, one of which is they'd like to hide us down by the river. But we won't go into hiding and we won't be hidden out of sight from the American public. We're seeing rapid changes in the way that veterans are being treated. On one hand, people are saying support the troops, honor the veterans. At the same time, the VA is up to its normal practices of taking away and covering up massive amounts of services that are being taken away from us. The Bush administration wants everyone to support the troops uh, and keep them in Iraq. We want to support the troops. We want to bring them home now. And when they come home, we demand decent benefits for veterans of all era. I'd like to introduce uh, Peter Zastro. Pete is a member of the Chicago chapter and a national coordinator of uh, Vietnam Veterans Against the War. Uh, Pete is also uh, has uh, two children in the military today. I gather I'm here as a kind of second choice, uh, looking for someone with military children. I have a child in the Army who just finished his advanced training, who will be home for a month and then is off to Korea, that kind of backwater where nobody even remembers that we have American troops. And as I think of it, 50 years after the end of the Korean War, I can't really figure out exactly why we have American troops here. But in any case, we do, and of all places for a young soldier to be sent, as his father, I'm most happy it's Korea instead of some of the alternatives. Years ago, I used to give speeches all the time about why we shouldn't be in Vietnam. And probably the most difficult single question that I was ever asked after one of these speeches would be the question from a gold star mother, meaning someone whose child had died in Vietnam, did my son die in vain? Well, it's a tough, way to, it's a tough question to answer, particularly when you're standing there looking at the mother of this child, and you know that the real answer is, yeah. Uh, all the reasons why your child was killed in Vietnam, and all the reasons why the U.S. military was in Vietnam at all, were all bad reasons. Now we're faced with a different kind of situation. Where, again, American parents have to face problem of their children dying in Iraq, or wives facing the problems of their husbands dying in Iraq, or children facing the fact that their father might die in Iraq. And I can hardly imagine how horrible it must be morning after morning to get up and listen to the news or watch the news on television and hear an American soldier has been killed today in an ambush. Five Americans have been killed today in a grenade attack. Rockets have come into an American base, and two more Americans have died today. 
I can only imagine that any American parent listening to that says, I'm sure that was mine, and looks out the door and waits to see the people in uniform coming up the front walk to tell them that their son or daughter or husband or father was today's casualty in Iraq. The more I talk to fellow Vietnam veterans about Iraq, the more often I find phrases talking about either place that sound exactly the same. There was a time when it seemed to me at least the United States government knew what it was doing in Iraq. Now we seem to be wandering around in the great Iraqi desert with no direction and having no idea where to go. And so I guess my final message would only be that to support our troops in Iraq, to really support them, we don't need to send the candy and the cookies, or even as one mother is doing, the air conditioners to our troops in Iraq. What we need to do is bring the troops home. Thank you. Closing today, I'd like to speak about true heroism. Speak of the living, speak of the dead. I'd like to speak about Master Sergeant Betty Calabrese, a World War II veteran who passed away yesterday, or two days ago, excuse me, is being buried today. Master Sergeant Betty Calabrese was a true hero to our country. She answered the call in World War II at a time when women were not necessarily given a lot. She performed well and she performed well as a veteran throughout her life. Uh, she even outranked her husband, who has also passed away. I'd also like to speak about another hero who was made a hero by, or attempted to make a hero by the Bush administration, Jessica Lynch from my home state of West Virginia. Jessica Lynch has finally became a true hero. Not because of the way she was portrayed in the media, the way that she was portrayed by the, by the military's uh, misinformation, the story of her heroism and how she survived and fought back valiantly in attack. Jessica Lynch has become a hero because her and her family have repudiated the Bush administration such that they feel that they've been used as a, pro as a propaganda tool by the Bush administration, and also that she feels terrible about the way that people returning from Iraq are being treated. And she feels terrible about her, her fellow POWs who were captured at the same time, who were brought back with little or no fanfare, and whose treatment has, has been abhorrent. The one young black woman who was, African American woman who was wounded, is now living on $600 a month, while Jessica Lynch and her family has received a lot, and she's received a lot. Unfortunately, we exist in a society where people who are career military, if they were wounded and they're disabled, cannot also receive their pension from the military. It's a terrible aspect, it's, it's a cost-cutting move, and we see no retreat in terms of the Bush administration, their attack upon Vietnam and veterans of all eras. We ask you to join with us in fighting for decent benefits for all veterans of all eras. Thank you very much for coming out today.